All right, we're going to create the very first part of this guessing game. So after this video, we will have something that looks like this over here on the right. And it will have the date looking like this format. And then we'll have three different levels. When we choose a level, it will disable the three radio buttons and the play button. And then it will enable these two buttons. It'll say guess a number one through whatever level we have. So easy, medium, or hard. So we'll do one through three, one through 10, and one through 100. And then it'll also, as a placeholder, it'll put the correct answer in here just so we can make sure that um, we know what it is so we can use it for testing and debugging purposes. And then um, next video, we'll update this, but we'll create the, uh, the total wins and the average score placeholders, as well as a leaderboard. Um, so at first, we'll go over this HTML over here on the left, and then we'll add the JavaScript next. So the first thing we're going to need is a paragraph to put the date in. So for that, we're going to add a P tag, and we want to talk about this stuff in JavaScript. So we want to give it an ID as well. So I'm going to call this ID date. And we don't have to put anything in it for now, because as soon as we load the page, we'll have the date um, show up using JavaScript. Uh, the next thing is the level. So the level is uh, going to just be an H3. We don't have to change that at all. So we'll just call it level. We don't need to give it an ID or anything. Uh, next, we'll do our radio buttons. So for this, this was an input. So input, the type is going to be a radio button. And if we want the um, to create an array out of this, we want to give them all the same name. So for this one, I'll say name equals uh, level. And then I also want to give it an ID because I want to be able to connect the label to it so I can click on the word easy, medium, or hard and not just a little tiny button. So for this one, I'll just call this um, easy. And then I will also um, give it a value so I can um, use that value to set the range of the level. So for the easy, I'll make it three and then I'll make it 10 for medium and then 100 for hard. And I can also do something like this and it's say checked. And that way when I load, originally the easy button will be checked. To add the label easy, I can add a label. And then if I want to connect it to that uh, above radio button, then I can just say four and then say that uh, the name of that button. So the ID was easy. And then in between here, you can say easy and then you can close that, that label right there. So I'm going to do this three times. I'm going to do this for medium. I'm going to do it for hard. So for this one, the level name stays the same. Uh, we're going to change the ID for this one to medium and the value to 10. And I'm going to make it not checked. So only one is going to be checked. And then this will be medium. And this will be for medium. And then finally, this one will be hard. This will be 100. Don't want it to be checked originally. And then this is for the hard. And this will be label hard. So that should show up with your first three lines here. So the date level and then the three things. We're just missing the button. So to do a button, we're going to do a button tag. We do want to talk about this. So we're going to call this the play button or the play BTN. And whatever you want the button to say, you put in between the tags, and then you can close that tags that tag. For uh, the next one, so guess a number one to 100. So originally, this is going to say pick a level, and we want to change this. So eventually, it'll say too high or too low. So we also want to give that an ID so we can um, change what it, what it says in there using the inner HTML later. So for this one, I'm going to make this an H3 again, except I'm going to give an ID, and let's call this msg short for message and inside that h3 we can write select a level and now again we can talk about that later using that id in javascript uh, next is the text field so the text field is another type of input so input type equals text and there is a placeholder in there, but we'll do that a little bit later using uh, using uh, JavaScript. But we do need to give it an ID. Let's call this the guess. Inputs don't need a closing tag, so we can move on to our button. And for this one, button, we'll give this one an ID of guess btn, so for guess button. 
And then we could, in between here, we can say guess if we want that button to say guess. Uh, right now, um, we want these to be enabled, but before we pick up level, we want these to be disabled. So inside of the actual tags, you can write the word disabled, and that will just gray them out to start. So this one would have to go inside of the opening tag and make that disabled as well. Uh, the next part is just the stats, and that doesn't need to change ever, so that can be an H3. We don't need anything on that for an ID because we don't have to change it. And then each of these can be paragraphs, so total wins, we'll call that ID wins. And then we're going to close that, but in between it, we're going to write total wins, and we can start at zero because they haven't played yet. And for the next paragraph, we can give this one an ID as well. This is uh, the average score, so let's call this AVG score. <clears throat> and we can write average score in between there, and then close our paragraph tag. Uh, the leaderboard, kind of similar to stats, is just a, uh, a title, so we don't need anything special here. So we can just write an H3. We'll do leaderboard. And then to number these things, so if you want the top three, you can use what's called an ordered list, which is OL, which would um, number the things. UL would be unordered, and that would be UL. And each one of these is going to have a list item. And since we can save all of these things by name and save them into an array and loop through them, we can just give this a name instead of an ID. So here we'll call this, we'll call it leaderboard. And if you want, you can make it 100. And that'll just put the 100 next to it. So that'll be one, this will be two, and this will be three. So we have three, three places, right? You could go, you keep going, you could go to 10, and it doesn't change anything in your code because they're all called leaderboard. So when you loop through, it'll just give you the top ones. And just if it doesn't have one, we'll have it stay at 100. And that should be it for the HTML. So um, if I run this now, hopefully it looks similar. Um, the only thing I don't have is my date because I haven't populated that yet, but this one will be disabled. It says select a level. You should be able to click on medium or hard the words. And right now the play button doesn't do anything. So let's go over to JavaScript and make things work. So at the top here, we're going to create something called global variables. So these are variables that all the different functions inside of our JavaScript can use. And if you change it, if you define it outside up here, then if you change it inside of a function, it'll change for all the functions. So it's kind of like an umbrella that everyone can use. Another little fact is that if you um, have defined an ID for an HTML element, then it actually knows that automatically in JavaScript because it's part of the window. So if you call the play button, play button, then you can just say play button instead of um, saving it into a variable using get element by ID. So that is unnecessary. Uh, but what we can do is we can set up some things we need, like the uh, the array of buttons we need for each level. So since it's an array, we like to make it constant so you don't accidentally destroy the array later. And we'll call this level array. And to do that, you're going to use document dot get elements by name. So that is plural, so more than one. And then what is the name of those? Well, that is level. So that will go and grab easy, medium, and hard, all those HTML elements, and save them into um, an array called level array. Um, we're also going to need some variables later that we want to use. So we want to define them up top so we can use them later. We don't have to set a value to them yet, but we're going to need something like the actual level, whether that's 10 or 100 or 3. Um, we're going to need an answer. So what is the, the random number that you came up with for the guessing game? And then we'll need a score as well. And then thinking ahead, we're going to need that leaderboard array as well. So all the scores need to be saved into an array. So again, that should be a constant. And we can call that score array. And since it's a constant, you have to set a value to it. And we want it to be an empty array. So we use empty brackets. Uh, next, we're going to use our, we're going to add the event listeners. So these are going to make the play and guess buttons work properly. So again, like I said, if you have already called an ID in HTML, you can just use the name of that ID. You don't have to do get elements by ID. You can, but you don't need to. 
So I called it play button for the first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, an event listener. Uh, the one thing about um, not saving it into a variable is it doesn't give you the code completion for like add event listener. So here I want to do it on a click that is going to be all lowercase. It is case sensitive. And now you can say um, basically what function do you want to run when you click this button? The only downside is that you can't have parameters unless you use an anonymous function. So for this one, I can just create play and eventually I'm going to have a function called play that will run when I click the button. So we'll fill that in, in a second. And then I have the guess button. So guess btn dot add event listener. And that is going to be click again. And now I'll create one called make guess. And eventually we'll go ahead and create a function called make guess with no parameters. Again, we could put parameters in here, but we'd have to use an anonymous function. And the reason why you would want to use parameters is because you want to take some information and send it to another place. But since we're just in the same file, we can just, just call that information from inside this file. Um, and then one more thing that we want to do is we want to change the date, which is a paragraph up here that has nothing in it. So before we create the functions for play um, today and make guess in the next video, let's check out um, how we can add a date to this. So since uh, the paragraph does have an ID of date, you can say date, and then you could use the inner HTML property, which if it's on the left side of an assignment operator, you can actually write in between those two paragraph tags. So you can say something like, hi. And if you were to run this, hopefully it pops up and says, hi, right here. So instead of saying hi, we want to put the date in here. And just for later, we're going to create a function because you are going to want to probably add more to this function. And we'll call that time. So then we'll create a function called time with no parameters. And what we want to do is we want to create a date object. And to do this, you create a variable. I'm going to call it D. And then you say you want a new date object. And you can read all about this in unit eight of the book. But new date basically creates an object and it gets stored into here. Um, that has a lot of methods like get day, get minute, get hours, get uh, the day of the week and all these different methods that you can use. Um, but for now, that's going to be a little bonus point you can get it later, but we're just going to return this letter D now. So basically when it calls time, it's going to go down here, create the date object and return that. And what does that return? Well, if you run it, you will see it does something like this. And you can update that later if you want to try to make your project a little better. So let's go do the play button. Uh, and this will be the last thing for this video. We'll uh, basically go loop through these buttons and then we'll um, set the level. We'll create a random number out of that level. We'll disable these buttons and then we'll say, guess a number one through that level. And then we'll enable um, these um, this text field in this button. And we'll also put the answer as a placeholder in here. So a couple of things that we want to do <clears throat> when we hit this play button, one thing we want to do is we want to set the score because maybe it's like the fifth time they're playing. So we don't want a running score. So every time we click that play button, we want to reset that score to zero. Now we can loop through our um, array of levels. So we can say for let i equals zero, which um, the nice thing about using let inside of a loop is you can keep using i in other places because this i only exists inside this loop. And we want to go as long as i is less than that array we created. So level array dot length. And then we want to add one each time. So for us right now, this is going to be zero, one, and two, because we only have three things in our array. And then we can check to see if the current thing is checked. So if level array at that current index, which is i, is checked, which we can use the property checked, which is going to give you a Boolean either true or false, then we can say, well, if it's checked, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set our level that we created up before to whatever the value is of that current um, radio button. And we created that earlier and we called it um, value. So we can do level array dot or level array at i dot value. And so that will 
give you three or 10 or 100 in our case. And since we're already looping through inside of our loop, but outside of our if statement, we can go through one by one and just disable these buttons because it's going to be easier to do now and not have to worry about it later. So what we can do is outside of the if statement inside the loop, we can do level array at I, and then there's a property that we added called disabled, and we can just set that equal to true. So now if I loop through, if I run this and I hit play, all three of these buttons should now be grayed out. So if I hit play, all three buttons are now grayed out. And again, if you refresh it, it doesn't matter which one you're on, click it again, they're all grayed out. So since we did that um, outside of this for loop, so we've already gone through and figured out if the things are checked or not. Now we can um, enable these two things and we also have to disable the play button. So the play button was called play btn. So we can say play btn dot disabled. And now we set that one also equal to true. And then for the other two, it's just going to be disabled, except we don't want it disabled. So we just set it to false. So the first one, the text box was called guess. Disabled equals false. And then the other one was guess button. And again, since that has an ID, you don't have to do document to get element by ID, which is kind of nice. So disabled equals false for this one. So if I run it now and click this button, these should all go gray, including this button, and these should show up, which they do. So now they can't do anything up here, so they can't change their level mid-game. And now they're allowed to make a guess, which doesn't quite do anything yet. Um, so the only two things we're missing, um, we want to say select level. Um, we want that to change to guess a number 1 through 10 or 1 through 100. And then we want the placeholder um, right here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get what is going to be the correct answer to be able to put it into the placeholder. So to get that, we already have created answer up top. It's a global variable. And now we can come up with a random number using math.floor of math.random. And then we want to multiply that by how many different things we want. So we have that stored in a variable called level. And then we want to shift it over by adding to one to it. So instead of going from zero to 99, we're going from one to 100. Um, to change the, uh, the message there, the select level, that was called MSG. So that's again, the <coughs> inner HTML. And we can set that now to guess a number one through something, and we can concatenate on level. So one through three, one through 100, whatever it is. And then finally, the text field, if you want a placeholder, the text field was called guess. And instead of changing the inner HTML or the value, we want to change the placeholder. And we can just set that equal to the answer. So now if you run that, and you select hard, and you hit play, now this changes to guess the number 1 to 100. And then you can see what the answer would be, which is 15. So the guess button doesn't work yet. We'll add that in the next video. And then obviously the stats and the average score and the leaderboard doesn't work. But if you run this easy, you can see that the answer is one, guess a number one through three. And then if you refresh it and you try medium, hit play, it disables all these buttons. And then it adds um, one through 10, and then it gives you the correct answer here. So we will look at how to add um, functionality to the guess button and the stats and the leaderboard in the next video.